We are first introduced to the Kingdom of Heartland, which is a very technologically advanced kingdom that is confident in its ability in making cars. All the people in this kingdom are working in car manufacturing. They all have a car which is causing a huge problem of traffic in the kingdom. If anyone is caught not having a car, they will be punished and forced into buying one. The king, however, has something weighing his heart heavily. His daughter, the princess called Ancien Heart is born with magic and is thought to bring misfortune to the kingdom. Her magic allows her to utilize a magic tablet to bring machines to life, as she has done it with her stuffed toy, Joy, and a motorbike. Despite the potential of her magic, the minister of the kingdom feels threatened by its existence and has the king seal her in a glass mansion. One of the ministers, Watanabe has been eyeing for the king's throne and is very especially careful with dealing with the princess magic. Suddenly, Kokone wakes up from her dream. She is a clumsy and cheerful young teenager with a very vivid imagination which allows her to form the entire Heartland Kingdom in her dreams with her as their princess. In the real world, she lives with her father, Momo, and the stuffed toy, Joy. They only have each other as her mother already died several years ago due to an accident. The year is 2020 and Japan is about to host the Olympics in the year. The government plans to have automatic self-driving cars for the athletes on the first day and has assigned Shirjima Motors, the biggest car manufacturing company in Japan, to handle the project. The news is broadcasted on the television, but Kokone and her father don't appear to care about it in the slightest. Despite Kokone being so talkative, her father is a reserved guy who doesn't talk much. Most of their conversation is done through the messaging apps on their phone. Momo is a very genius mechanic but mostly only help out the elderly around, giving them cool upgrade to their vehicle but is only taking the repair fee from them. On her way to school, she stumbles upon her childhood friend, Morio, who studies in Tokyo and is currently back for summer vacation. Being the hyperactive girl that she is, Morio seems embarrassed with her and tries to act cool. In school, the clumsy Kokone quickly fell asleep and returned to the Kingdom of Heartland. The kingdom is currently being attacked by a monster called Colossus and the king ordered the creation of three giant machines called Engine Heads to protect the kingdom. Ancien quickly realizes that they will not be enough to stop the monster since their movements are so stiff and can only defeat it if she could give them a life. Her prediction came true, but she notices someone with a pirate jersey on his back heading to fight the Colossus alone. It was her father from the real world, but she doesn't recognize him here. Ancien takes her tablet and the vehicle she brought to life to save him. She arrives just in time to save him and they quickly escape together. In the real world, Momo receives a call, telling him to handle the tablet or he will face them in court. But he ignores it and heads to his wife's grave, bringing Joy with him. He puts Joy on her grave and tells her about how his father-in-law wants custody of Kokone and his tablet after many years have passed. The local cops suddenly surround him and take him into custody. In school, Kokone is informed that her father has been taken to the police. But when she heads to the local police station, she can't seem to find him. Remembering that he told her that he will go visit mother's grave, she goes there and finds Joy lying on her mother's tombstone. She picks it up and realizes that there's a tablet that belongs to her father inside of Joy. Back home, her doorbell rings and Watanabe and some other men are peeking from outside. She suddenly gets a text from her father that tells her not to trust the evil guy as he sends her a picture of him. They then break into the house to search for her and the tablet. As they enter, Kokone receives another text from her father to keep the tablet safe from them but by then, Watanabe already managed to find the tablet inside Joy. As they try to find Kokone as well, she hides inside but is then saved when Morio comes into her house to see her. Watanabe then immediately heads to the airport with Joy and leaves a man to see if she is still around. Kokone quickly takes Morio to her garage and asks him to ride Momo's specially designed bike even though he still doesn't have a license. As they get to the airport, Kokone sneaks in and notices Joy alongside Watanabe's bag. She tries to quietly steal it back, but as Joy is tied to the suitcase, she takes the entire suitcase with her instead. 
She quickly runs away and gets on the bike, escaping Watanabe and his men's chase. During the chase, she lost her phone and tries to see if the tablet have any contact information of her father. Inside, Morio finds the closed chat app for mechanics instead. They decide to post some messages there, hoping to contact her father. They also find Watanabe's card in the suitcase and realize that he is a senior executive of Shirjima Motors. Despite how famous Shirjima Motors is, Kokone doesn't have any idea of it. However, her mother's maiden name is also Shijime, which seems like a coincidence for her. Already tired from the journey, she decides to sleep and Morio also eventually joins her. When Morio wakes up, he also arrives at the Heartland World and is welcomed by Ancien who is excited to have Morio join her. They immediately find out that her father of this world, Peach, has been taken away by the Imperial soldier. The two of them realize that the world of the dream is somehow connected to the real world. They quickly get on the bike that Ancien has given life to and fly away to the rescue. In the police station, Momo notices the messages Kokone sent in the chat app but the police is realize that and snatch his phone away from him. They have been informed that he stole the code from Shirjima Motors and interrogate him for that, even though he insists that it was Shirjima Motors that steal the code as it originally belongs to his wife. Kokone and Morio wake up only to find themselves in Osaka, it is as if the travel they have done in the dream world is also happening in real life. The bike has auto-driving capability and has been automatically driving to Osaka through the night. As they stop by a nearby gas station, Morio gets a call from his father. His father tells them that some mysterious men have been looking for her around her house. The men tell them that they were sent by Kokone's grandfather who is the chairman of Shirjima Motors. They are looking for the tablet as they say that it has been stolen by Momo which is of course denied by Kokone. Watanabe snatches the phone and threatens to hand over the tablet if she wants her father back safely. But Kokone decides to just go see the chairman herself to clear things up. Morio then realizes that some men from Shirjima Motors seem to be following them around. He programs the bike to return home while they discreetly head to the train station. However, they got no way to buy the ticket as they are both broke. Through the chat app, Kokone tells her father that they are on the way to Tokyo to save him. She also says that she doesn't have any money to buy the ticket but suddenly a woman arrives and hands them some tickets for the trains. They then hand her Watanabe's suitcase to be given to the police and quickly board the train. Inside the train, Kokone once again tries the chat app and says that she is hungry and wants some lunch. Suddenly again, they are miraculously given some lunch boxes by the stewardess there. She then goes back to sleep after eating her lunch and returns to the dream world. However, this time, she is no longer on Sien and is just herself. She can see Peach and on Sien together trying to bring one of the engine heads to life. They sneak into the machine but the engineers quickly shut the engine down. On Sien tries to manually start the machine up again as Peach holds back the engineers. She manages to start most of them but during the last one, the machine starts to move, causing her to fall. She is quickly grabbed by Peach but her grip starts to loosen and Ancien turns out to be Kokone's mother, Ikumi. Her final message to Peach is to look after Kokone and as she slips, she falls onto the blazing colossus to her death. Kokone wakes up with tears as she realizes that her father has been telling her stories about her mother all along. The princess has always been her mother all along and all this time she has been seeing herself as the princess. This realization brings her more determination to meet her grandfather. As they arrive at Tokyo Station, they are confronted by Shirjima Motors' employee and Kokone leaves them as Morio holds them back. However, the employees turn out to be their allies and are the ones helping them through the chat app. They are against Watanabe and don't want him to get the original code for the auto-driving vehicle that is on that tablet. Morio heads back home and tells Momo who had just been released that Kokone is currently in Tokyo. They then immediately go back to Tokyo together. At Shirjima Motors headquarters, Kokone is rejected and ridiculed by the receptionist after she tells her that she is the chairman's granddaughter. Fortunately, 
Shirjima also comes out to get some fresh air and she manages to meet him. The two end up in a conversation about Akumi, even though Kokone doesn't reveal her identity and Shirjima also doesn't recognize her. He says that Akumi was a brilliant and forward-thinking engineer who wanted to have Shirjima Motors' vehicle run automatically using AI. However, Shirjima only cared for traditional cars where people can control them and is too stubborn to accept the proposal, causing her to leave the company and live with Momo. In the end, he never heard of her until the day she died. The upcoming Tokyo Olympic project is the colossus that he needs to defeat as he now has to create AI cars. And then Kokone's dream world and real world got mixed as her grandfather turns into the Heartland King and leaves her. Suddenly, Watanabe appears in his dream form and takes her captive. He tells her that he has planned for the chairman's cars to fail during the Olympics so that he can take over the company. The man then throws the tablet down and Kokone immediately jumps to grab it. She is still hanging by the edge and Peach comes to her rescue. The king who recognizes her granddaughter after seeing Joy with her, takes Watanabe into custody. Just then the Colossus appears to attack them and Peach manages to expertly control the remaining engine heads and defeat it. However, Watanabe manages to unleash a curse to destroy everything when the Colossus is defeated. Peach manages to lure the curses to the space away from the kingdom with the magic from the tablet. As he falls from the sky, Kokone immediately heads to save her father using the magic vehicle Ancien has created before. In the real world, however, Kokone is still hanging from a ledge as she jumps after Watanabe throws the tablet away, just like in the dreams. But luckily, her father arrives at the right time and grabs her arm. Just as she starts slipping, the automatic bike Momo had created arrives and manages to save them both by placing a large balloon beneath them. Momo suddenly remembers Akumi's last words that tell him that she will be back for him if he needs help. Days later, Shirjima Motors' Olympic project is a huge success as the vehicles successfully carry the athletes on the first day of the Olympics. The film ends with Kokone, Momo, and Shirjima spending their time together in their humble house. So that concludes the recap of Napping Princess. What do you guys think? The film explores themes of family bonds, the importance of dreams, and the relationship between past and present. Kokone's journey to uncover the truth about her father gradually uncovers a family secret, revealing the connection between her dreams and real-life events. The transitions between Kokone's reality and Heartland are skillfully executed, providing a seamless flow between the two worlds. The fantastical dream sequences and action-packed adventure cater to younger viewers, while the emotional family drama and hidden mysteries provide substance for older viewers. Its unique concept and heartfelt storytelling make it an enjoyable watch for audiences of various ages. Please tell us what you think through the comment section. If you like this content, please leave us a like and share them with your friends. Thank you for watching, until we see you again.